Hi, my name is Grace, and today we're going to be doing a tutorial on how to draw hair, or at least pretty straight hair, as requested by actually a few people. Um, so yeah, first you start with the hairline. I'm drawing three different examples of hairlines. You could have like a widow's peak, you can have the standard straight hairline, you can have a hairline that kind of goes back a little bit, but it's nice just to have a hairline as a reference for when you put the actual hair on. And when I draw hair, see right here I'm doing bangs, I always think of it as clumps. So I'm not drawing like each individual strand, instead I'm drawing like groupings of hair. And I always try and give my hair movement too. I think that that's super important. Um, which is why like, even just drawing like completely straight hair can look interesting, but you have to give it a movement like to the side or even just straight down some kind of like body. See this hair, even though it's straight, kind of curves at the end and at the bangs. Um, and then right here I'm demoing a girl with a pixie cut. And when I draw pixie cuts, I always start like, I don't know, because you don't really have a part with the pixie. So I start the origin of the hair at one spot and then all the hair just kind of branches off from there. And then here I'm doing a guy with like that classic uh, Nazi like comb over or whatever. And here I'm just showing that the hair the movement is that it's going back and you don't have to show where the hair like ends or whatever because it's like when you fold a ribbon over you don't see the back of it. Um, so that's why I'm just drawing like the hair being pulled back but not sort of the, the ends of the hair or where, where it goes. Um, so yeah, that's how I draw hair. That's the easy part. I guess the harder part is painting the hair. And I also should have probably called this tutorial painting and drawing hair. Um, so here I'm just blocking in my colors. You don't always have to do it like this. Sometimes I, I'll just like color the whole thing pink and then go from there, like do a base color. But this is a demo on how to like draw a naturally colored hair. So I put my layer on multiply, a new layer on multiply, and I'm um, blocking in my colors. And I like to start with brown roots or like some kind of root with unnaturally colored hair because that keeps it from looking too wig-like and then I put orange or yellow as like a little bit of a bleach banding and then I put the unnatural color. And so as you can see I'm outlining all the strands in dark pink which I like to do and now I'm merging my layers together. It's really important you should merge the hair color layer on to the uh, line layer and I do that by right clicking or double clicking and then clicking the merge button. And now I'm painting my original light pink color on top of my sketch layer. As you can see, I'm not being constrained in the lines anymore, which is what the multiply layer does. And then I basically just continue this process. Um, my brush is on, I think, like 80% opacity, but I do a pressure sensitivity. And I'm just adding this lighter color and then adding the darker purple that was created when I put the pink on multiply over the blue. And when I blend, I'm just blending by um, zooming in, or I don't have to zoom in anymore, I can kind of just eyeball it, but I'm blending by clicking my eyedropper tool, which you can either find on the left side, this is in Photoshop, so, you, so uh, it's on the left side toolbar, or you can click um, the option alt key on my keyboard and then click and that will be the eyedropper, or if you have a Wacom tablet, the top left button is the eyedropper right you can see it in the um it just flashed up on the screen i just click that and then i'm outlining everything with the same dark purple so as you can see also my blending is not like completely smooth that's just not how not how i roll um but yeah when you zoom in you're gonna see like it's not like completely smooth like it would be if I was using a watercolor brush and like fire alpaca or Psy or something. Um, but I think that this still looks pretty cool to have it a little rougher. I know that there's this artist on Instagram called Muna that I love and that's how she blends. Um, so yeah, and then I pick like a light pink color and I just add that everywhere that the light would hit. Kind of like the highlights of the hair. So right around the bangs, and then I add a few lighter pieces around the face just to frame it, and then I make my brush really small, and I pick like a whitish color, and I add a few flyaways. And yeah, that is how I do a naturally colored hair, and that's also how I would do um, 
like sort of longer hair and you you know hair isn't completely like all one dimension so there should be like darker spots where you know it falls behind the ears or where some strands are on top of others and all that jazz and so now this is going to be a demo on how you would draw uh, blonde hair so when I do blondes I like to start with a really ashy almost brown color and like do not make blonde hair straight yellow and so I you can see in my color picker I'm like halfway to gray and that's how desaturated it should be um so I just fill in all the hair with my base color and a new layer on multiply it's a common theme basically I use the same technique for all kinds of hair it's just sometimes nice I think for our you know to see it a couple times to help you understand it and then I outline each of my little strands in this pixie cut with like a dark desaturated brown um and I'm doing this, I think, again, on like 80% opacity, but I'm pressing pretty hard because I'm using a tablet. Um, you can probably draw hair. I mean, I know you can draw without a tablet, but I would not like strongly recommend it. It's kind of a pain in the butt and it makes like your entire life more difficult. Um, so then I just merged my layers together again. Um, and now I'm adding all the blonde back in at the tips because what I've noticed is that blondes generally do have darker roots unless if you're like white blonde, their roots are kind of like a medium blonde and then it, the hair gets lighter as it grows. And I actually tend to see that more in longer hair though. So like this looks a little Guy Fieri, like ramen, Justin Timberlake in like, uh, Backstreet Boys, but... I think we're just gonna persevere um, and you can see the blue like peeking out because I you know colored my sketch layer in blue uh, so I'm gonna go over all of that with my light brown and yeah this is easier kind of to see my technique I think I basically just color each strand of hair or not not each strand each clump of hair <clears throat> sorry like it's a clump like it's like a tendril or like a tentacle or something uh, not going to elaborate on the tentacle front and as with the blonde hair you know there are darker parts so I'm coloring in some hairs are behind others some are darker than others and yeah basically like I don't know how else to explain it you just you know you just keep on shading and blending and shading and blending and shading and blending until finally you get kind of where you want to be there's like no I don't know you have to know when to stop, I guess. I am really bad at knowing when to stop. Um, I would like blend to the death if I could. And then I went in it with a really light color as you know, my technique is, and I just add like little strands at the very tips to kind of like liven it up, I guess. So going over all the blue too. And then I don't want to forget like my little hairline. So since it's like folding over there is a darker part I don't know so it's kind of like the ribbon like you can kind of see the back of the hair where it's folding over so I need to go in and underneath the little forehead curl make sure it's darker where the base of the hair is which I think I'm doing right now whoa go me um so yeah I, I this is just like the same process over and over again I spent a long time on this pixie because I was like, I want it to look good. I just got an email. I don't know if that showed up in the, um, like the noise came up. I just got an email for the Impossible Burger, which I'm actually like super psyched about and I want to eat. It's like this vegan burger that's supposed to taste like meat and it like is even pink inside. And there's one, in, there's a couple in San Francisco. So I think I might go and try, try that out. Try that vegan burger life, even though like, I, I don't know how I feel about vegans. I mean, not, not like vegans as people, like, I don't know how I feel personally about going vegan. I don't think I could do it. I'm already dairy free, but I just really like, um, really like Manchego cheese and I could not give it up. Except maybe like for ethical reasons. Eh, I don't even think for ethical reasons. I eat like free range food. Okay. I'm from California. Okay. So, um, now I'm just going with like my light, light yellow shades, the saturated light yellow shades and adding in the final highlights or like final yeah final highlights and then I add like the tiny little pieces where the light would hit them highest and that's like the anime style like highlight ring anyways so this is an example of how to draw really dark hair so what I do is I pick like a dark dark brown shade to do the top 
not black because the thing is like very few no no one has like black hair I remember going on a college tour to Tufts and I thought like everyone look there looks so weird and it's because like the a bunch of people had like black hair but it was like blue black and that's like how I knew it was unnatural because no one actually has like hair that dark um and you can see I'm taking like this dark blue green shade kind of to shade the bottom of the hair and then I'm using a light shade to very sparingly I merged my layers by the way FYI um, and I'm using a light shade to very sparingly like get the top right where right before the hair would like comb over because the hair's longer on the top and it kind of like falls down the back or whatever so light would hit the top of the hair um, and then for the shave part I made it and yeah you can kind of see there I added like a few little strands of hair so you can kind of imagine how it's folding over then for the shave parts I made it like a light um, taupe gray color and then I added like skin colored lines just to like imply that there's you know like skin underneath like it's not a complete opaque color like the hair that is cropped very short and then I added some dark lines to kind of um, be the shaved parts and I made sure it's fuzzy not completely uniform but then I realized that the ears are completely uneven on this guy so I had to add ears on or else it would look very strange um, which I actually realized and so yeah this was the quickest one to do because dark hair is like not a lot of highlights not as much color variation as blondes unfortunately I have dark hair so really sad about it and if you want to like really emphasize where the hair is going, you can take like a tiny brush with white and add a few lines and that kind of shows the viewer like how the hair is moving. It also looks like gray spots, but such is life. Um, so yeah, that was my hair tutorial. As you can see, you have now learned how to draw just straight hair um, in a natural color, in a dark color, and in a blonde color, long and short. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial this week and that you learned something and it wasn't a waste of your time. I will see you next week. Thanks for watching.